Hi everyone, James here from School of Synthesis. So following the release of Logic Pro for iPad, we thought we would take this opportunity to create a small video showing how you can use Scalar 2 to help create a small track within Logic Pro. This video will be a short video just to help you familiarise yourself with using Scalar 2 inside Logic Pro. So for starters we will create a new project, add a new MIDI track and load Scalar 2 as an instrument. Now to do this I'm going to clear the browser window, open the track and click on the plus icon. As the Scalar 2 instrument for iPad is an AU plugin, you will find it down the bottom under audio units. At this point it is worth noting that Scalar Lite audio unit is for GarageBand and not the one we choose to load up here in Logic. Now first of all, let's just create an idea using Scalar 2. So we'll open up the Scalar 2 interface by double clicking on the unit and if I grab the top bar here and drag up I can maximise the plugin view. At this point in time, as the Logic release is still very new, there are some things still being worked on with Scalar, and one of those is how the plugin is displayed. You will notice that some of the top is just ever so slightly cut off, though the features are still accessible. It is worth noting though, that you can turn your iPad into portrait mode at any stage, and the Scalar interface will resize and give you more screen real estate if needed. Now I'm just going to choose a scale for starters. I think I'll go with the C- minor scale. I'll start by dragging these three chords down into section C. I'll go C minor, F minor, and E flat major. And I'll select a different sound to the piano. Uh, I think Detroit will work. Now I have some chords to work with, I'm going to select a performance from the perform header in Scalar and select Sequences, Synth Sequences, and I'll choose Synth 2. Next I'll just make sure Bind is enabled for Section C, and I will minimise Scalar and draw in my trigger notes. Now to do this you simply right click on the Timeline section of your track and select MIDI Region. Now I'm using a mouse here, um, if you don't have a mouse you can just double tap instead. Uh, I'm going to trim the clip size to 4 bars by clicking on the region and dragging the right side out and then activating the piano roll down the bottom here. Now I'm just going to pinch with my fingers to resize the piano roll and then select the pencil tool. The pencil tool is what I'll draw my notes in with. I'll start drawing my trigger notes in. Now in Scalar with bind enabled, by default the binding of chords starts at C2 on the keyboard and binds to each subsequent white key. So my first trigger note will be on C2, and then D2, and lastly E2. So I'll just enable my cycle locators now, and let's hear that. Okay, so we have our small initial idea. Let's now come up with a bit of a bass line and a drum groove. This time I will start by creating a new pattern track instead, and in the browser I'm going to find a patch to use. I like the bass sound in this Doing Science patch, so I'll select that. Now I'm going to right click on the track and this time select Create New Pattern Region instead of Create New MIDI Region. Now I'm just going to extend the trim of these regions out to 8 bars. And then I'll do the MIDI region up here. I'm going to loop this one just so it repeats. And then I'm going to extend my cycle locators. Now back down in the Pattern Editor, I'm going to add some notes to the kick sub sound here. Now that sounds slightly off, so let's take a look at what note is triggering. I'll click this little arrow here and it will take us to some more options to tailor the note. So if I take a look at the note being triggered, it is a B. Now given that we are in C minor, B is actually not in our scale. So what I will do is go ahead and drag to set that B to the C, which is the root note of our scale. Okay, so let's add a little variation now. I'll adjust the pattern length here to 32 steps and then click on the second part. In the second part, I will add one extra note here at the end and set it to play a D2. Now we can hear that.
Great, that will do it for the bass for now. Let's just quickly add a drum groove. This time I will add a drummer track and in the browser I will select a patch for our drums. I like the analog drive patch. Now I could tailor this patch and performance but for the sake of time I'm just going to leave it as is because it already sounds pretty good. I might just quickly lower the project tempo to 110. Yep, yeah, that sounds a bit better. Okay, next up, let's add some more melodic stuff with some pads maybe. Let's use Scalar again, but this time we will use Scalar to trigger another synth in our project. Uh, I'll add another MIDI track, and on this track I'll add Alchemy this time as the instrument. Uh, once it's loaded up, I'll double click Alchemy to open up the instrument and in the presets, I'll go to pads. Now, I don't know if this is a bug or not, but I have noticed that sometimes when I click the folders, presets won't display and then backing out of the folder and going back in seems to make them appear as they should. So having done that, I'm going to choose the alone preset. Now I'm going to load Scalar up, but this time as a MIDI effects to control our synth here instead of an instrument. I'm just going to open it up and set up the same chords in our Section C Progression Builder here. Scale, C minor, chord C minor, F minor, E flat major. And then make sure our bind is enabled. The last thing we need to do so that these chords are being triggered is copy our already existing trigger notes in the MIDI region above and paste them onto our new track here with the pads. Now you can do this um, just by right clicking, um, again double tapping if you don't have a mouse, on the region, uh, select copy and then drag your playhead back to where you want to paste it and then right click again and select paste at playhead. Great, now let's listen to that. Now those pads sound good, quite moody, but I think we can spread them out a bit more and get them to sit nicer. So I'm just going to open Scalar back up and head to the voice lock settings or voicing lock settings. And under this drop down, I'm going to select dynamic voicing. Uh, this will just spread the notes out a bit and help them sit in the mix a bit more. Let's hear it now with the changes. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Uh, I might just turn them down a little. And maybe we could add just a quick little sidechain compressor from our kick drum to give it a bit of a pulsing vibe. Now to do this, I'll add a compressor here on the pad track. You'll find it under the dynamics section. Now I'll double click the compressor to open it up. And the first thing I will do is go to the sidechain drop down here and select the kick sound from our analog drive drum instrument. Now when I start playback, we should see some gain reduction on our pads whenever the kick drum hits. Great, I might just make this a little bit more pronounced by increasing the threshold a bit here. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Now the last thing I wanted to show here is the ability to sync instances of Scalar inside Logic Pro on iPad. So let's create a different baseline here instead, uh, though this time we will use Scalar to generate the baseline and we will use a Scalar internal bass sound. Um, using the sync feature, we can quickly load up a new instance and sync our settings from an already existing Scalar within our project. So to do that, let's create another MIDI track and select Scalar as the instrument. 
And now if we open it up, obviously nothing is set up on this scalar as we've just loaded it. But if we close this and go back to our original scalar instrument, I can go to the scalar logo menu here up in the top left and navigate to the sync menu. Here we can select what parts of this scalar we want to sync to the other. In this situation, I'm just going to sync the whole state. Now, I just want to mention that right at this point in time, in Logic Pro for iPad, you can only sync instances of Scalar Instrument with other instances of Scalar Instrument. So I am unable to sync this with our Scalar Control, which is triggering our Alchemy Synth. Uh, this is currently being worked on, and if you're watching this video in the future, it has probably already been rectified. But at this point in time, it's just between two instances or more of Scalar Instruments. Now after the sync is completed, we can go back to our new instance of Scalar and see that the chords have now been copied across and populated into section C, and the same sound and performance has been activated also. Now as this is going to be a new bass line, I'm going to pick a different sound and a different performance. I'll select a bass sound. Uh, the 808 bass will probably work pretty well in this situation. And as for the performance, I will want to select a bass pattern. So I'll go back and find the bass patterns and select Melodic Bass 3. With that set up, I will go back to my timeline and again copy down the existing trigger notes we have above. I'll quickly mute the original bass and let's hear the new one in context. Great, sounding good. Uh, that does it for this quick little video on making a track in Logic Pro for iPad using Scalar 2. Hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.